finally we have made it to a video we honestly did not realize we had not made yet. These are the 24 most expensive Pokemon cards. Back in the early 2000s, Tops had a license to produce Pokemon themed cards, and so went out of their way to produce honestly some of the coolest looking cards the Pokemon franchise ever made. But with Tops Chrome cards, there were three different rarities and the standard non-holographic rarity. These rarities were Spectrochrome, Sparkle Chrome, and Technochrome, each being increasingly rarer than the one before. The pull rates for these were abysmal and made finding these cards incredibly difficult. That's where the Charizard comes in. And of course, this won't be the last time we see Charizard on this list. The Topps Chrome Charizard Techno sold on eBay in March 2022 for $23,000. And now we look at a Kung Fu Panda card where your Pokemon can become the Dragon Warrior. The Master Scroll is a trophy card that was awarded to members of the Japanese Pokemon fan club, the Daisuke Club. This fan club had an interesting system where you could receive points for completing activities. This was basically the same system as the Pokemon. Pokemon Trainer Club in the West, to redeem this elusive card, you would have needed to amass 8,600 points, which was no easy task for the members. This card sold at a PSA 9 for $25,000, however, other sellers are looking for around $35,000, with one person looking for $100,000 for a PSA 10 version. Now, this next card arguably will be the most valuable Pokemon card eventually, and the reason for my belief on this is the fact that the card only came out in 2018, and of course, we are talking about the Gold Pikachu card. Released in 2018 as a part of Pokemon's 20th anniversary, this Pokemon card is made of 11 grams solid 24 karat gold. The card is a replica of the original Pikachu card with design with Chonkachu. When the card came out, people had a chance to enter a lottery where if they won, they could buy the card for $2,000. But since then, its value has been rising exponentially. In 2019, the card was worth $8,000. Then in 2020, it was worth $13,000. And then in 2021, the card sold for $30,000 in a PSA 5 grade. Yes, you heard me right. A PSA 5 graded card sold for $30,000. That's why I believe this card will one day be the most valuable card. Now again, we have another Charizard card, and this time we have the Holographic Crystal Charizard. This card comes from the Mysterious Mountains or Skyridge expansion for the TCG, the final set to be produced by Wizard of the Coast. This was the final Japanese set to utilize the e-reader, although the English sets would continue using it for a while. Charizard is obviously the most high-profile chase card out there, however, this Charizard is a bit less valuable than a lot of other Charizards out there. The most this card has ever sold for is $41,000 in an auction from October of 2022. <laughs> Rayquaza has arguably the best shiny ever in a Pokemon game. Black shinies just seem to resonate with the fanbase in a way that regular cards and shinies do not. So it's no surprise that next on our list we have the shiny gold star Rayquaza. EX Deoxys is one of the rarest booster boxes of all time, and this gold star Rayquaza is this set's chase card. In 2020, this card sold for $38,000, but then come June 2023, where the card sold for $50,000. The card seems to show no sign of slowing down. On par with the Rayquaza is, strangely enough, Torchic. Gold Star cards are very valuable since not that many of them are ever printed, which makes them rarer. However, the appeal of this card actually comes from its design. The card is designed by artist Masakazu Fukuda, who drew the Torchic to be popping out of the frame, giving the player a cheeky little wink. A PSA 10 version of this card sold in October 2021 for $50,000. The first Tropical Mega Battle card to appear today, but definitely will not be the last, is the number 2 trainer card. These cards were produced for the Tropical Mega Battle Tournament, which was a short-lived tournament which ran between 1999 and 2001. The top 3 players in this tournament each got to take home a card with a happy little executor on it. However, after 1999, the players would get personalized cards. This card sold in 2020 for $50,500. Now, error cards are not common, and this can lead to common cards normally worth 20 cents to be worth thousands. But what happens if you take a base set card that without errors is worth $15,000 and to forget to print a rarity symbol? And to make matters even more insane, you get the artist to sign it. Well, then you would have the base set no rarity Venusaur error card, which sold at a PWCC auction for $55,000 in 2021. There is a reason I enjoy making Pokemon videos, and it's because I'm always learning about things I did not even realize existed. This is the 2005 Summer Battle Road Mew Victory Orb card. Wow, that is an unnecessarily long name for this card. This card was given out as a prize for the 2005 Summer Battle Road Tournament, which consisted of 9 regional competitions, which back in 2005 was quite insane. The top 3 contestants would receive this Mew Victory Orb card, meaning only 3 of them exist. One of these cards sold in 2020 at PSA 10 for $60,000. 
We have spoken about this next card before on the channel, and this is the Pokemon Snap Chansey card. While promoting Pokemon Snap in 1999, Nintendo held two fan contests, where pictures taken in the video game would be turned into real Pokemon cards. Ten winners were selected from each of these competitions, however this is where things get weird. Winners from the Koro Koro side of the competition would get 20 of their card given to them. However, 64 Mario Stadium would only get 15, meaning Kaori Samea had been given a card that was more valuable than the other competition winners. One of these cards sold at auction in December 2022 for $63,000, and the rest of these snap cards have largely been lost to time. But who knows, maybe one day they will appear in the auction again. I'll be back. I told you we would see another Tropical Mega Battle card, and here we have the 1999 Tropical Mega Battle Tropical Wind card. This is another card produced for the 1999 Tropical Mega Battle competition, which invited around 50 contestants to Hawaii, where they battled it out for this elusive card. Now, we do not know how many of these were actually made, however there are definitely not many of them. In October of 2020, a PSA 10 condition copy sold for $65,100. A recent addition to the Pokemon Card Hall of Fame is the rare Master's Key prize card from the 2010 Pokemon World Championships. Each of the participants in this championship were awarded this card, which means that only 36 of them exist today. In 2019 at an auction, the card sold for $21,000, but then jumped forward 4 years and the card had tripled in price to $66,000. Up next we have another card that we have spoken about before as this is the Tamamushi University Promo Magic Cup card. Given out to the winners of the 1998 Tamamushi University Hyper Test, early promotional material seems to estimate that there are around a thousand of these cards produced. There is truly no way to know how many of these cards are out there, and that is what has led to the astonishing price of $66,100. Umbreon has got one of the most expensive cards attributed to it from the Sword and Shield era of cards. However, Umbreon has a card back from 2005 that is even more valuable, and this is the Gold Star Umbreon Play Promo card. This card was only awarded to members of the Pokemon Players Club who had managed to amass 70,000 points, which is not easy given most players would only start with 1,000. Fun fact is that the holographic version of this card was never released in English, making it a little bit more elusive. We have spoken about this card on the channel before, however it's always a very interesting card to come back to, the number one trainer card. This promotional card was awarded to the finalists of the Secret Super Battle Tournament in 1999. And it is said that only 7 of these were ever made, 6 of which are graded at a PSA 10. So the ratio of the card to PSA 10 is really quite good. One of these sold at auction in 2020 for $90,000. Lugia is cemented as one of the most popular Pokemon in history. The legendary fish bird thing first appeared in the Johto region and appeared in cards around the same time. Neo sets such as Neo Genesis or Neo Discovery have become notorious for being some of the lowest quality sets ever made which makes these cards really quite challenging to get a gem mint grade in. That means that when the cards like the holographic first edition Lugia get this grade, they're going to be immensely valuable, with one of these cards selling for $144,300 in May of 2021. This card I had never actually heard of, and it is interesting that the card is as expensive as it is. Back in 1998, Pokemon held a TCG tournament, however this was no conventional tournament as the entrants had to be a parent and their child. The teams that were able to progress through the tournament were gifted this card. Let's hope they hung on to the card though, as this card was exclusive to the tournament and featured the original TCG logo as a set symbol. One of these cards sold in October of 2020 for $150,100. This card's a bit different from the other cards we have spoken about today, as this is the Ishihara GX promo card, which does not actually feature a Pokemon, but rather the founder of the Pokemon company, Tsunekazu Ishihara. The promotional card was printed in celebration of the founder's 60th birthday and was handed out to the company employees that were at his birthday party. Copies of the card have sold at auction for around $50,000 without being graded, but one that was graded at near mint 7 by PSA sold for $247,230 in April of 2021. Now for the most expensive prize card on the list, the Trophy Pikachu number 3 trainer card. This card came out in June 1997, which was less than a year into the Pokemon TCG's lifespan. So you can imagine how few people were playing Pokemon back then. This was the first ever Pokemon tournament where a thousand children were chosen by a lottery system to be allowed to compete. Since this was such an early tournament, the decks that people were using were bizarre and certainly not competitively viable. The third place trainer card was given out to eight contestants, however only four of these have been certified to exist by PSA. In April 2023, one of these cards sold at auction for $300,000. Our next card was the most valuable Pokemon card for a long time, so let's talk about the Presentation Blastoise card. 
When Pokemon was reaching out towards the Western markets, they were approached by Wizards of the Coast about creating an English version of their Pokemon TCG, which had become massively popular in the East. Wizards of the Coast were the creators of Magic the Gathering, so had a lot of experience in the field. This presentation, Blastoise, was created to show the Pokemon company what the English version of their cards could look like. Nowadays, there were allegedly two made, but only one of them could be verified to exist, as it sold for $360,000 in January of 2021. Now, obviously everyone knew this card was on the way, as we have the Shadowless First Edition Charizard. This card was the first ever Charizard printed, and comes from a rarest string of these cards that did not have a shadow around the border. Back in the 90s, Charizard was by far the most popular Pokemon, and even today Pokemon feel the need to stuff Charizard down our throats. The fact that this card was shadowless technically makes it an error card, meaning that the card is so much more sought after by collectors, and one sold for $420,000 in October of 2020, making it the second most expensive legal for play card. The Thompson Charizard Blue Back card is technically not even a Pokemon card. This card was created around 1995 before Creatures Inc., the current developer of the Japanese TCG, even started making trading cards for the Pokemon company. Around this time, Topson decided they would give it a go, and they printed the Topson Pokemon cards, which were incredibly scarce. Allegedly, these cards were originally distributed with gum in Japan around 1997, but the date the card was printed was 1995, making its true origin and purpose a bit of a mystery. As you can imagine, there are not many of these around, with PSA only being able to identify about 31 of these. And that is why in January of 2021, a PSA 10 version of the card sold for nearly $500,000. This promo card is a bit different from any others, but I can guarantee you have heard of it. Pikachu Illustrator was a promo card originally given out to winners of a competition in 1999 run by Koro Koro, and only 39 of these cards were ever created. This card is the only card to feature the Illustrator title at the top, and the artwork was created by Atsuka Nushida, the creator of Pikachu. How many of these still exist is a massive mystery, although 10 copies of these have been graded as Mint or PSA 9, which those alone can sell for $233,000. The card's popularity skyrocketed when well-known crypto scammer Logan Paul bought the card for $4 million for the only PSA 10 version of the card ever found. Now this card is the most expensive Pokemon card ever sold. But what about a card that has never been sold? The pre-release Raichu card is as much a myth as it is a rare Pokemon card. Allegedly, these cards were wrongfully printed in the run-up to the release of the TCG Jungle expansion, with the word pre-release on them. These misprint cards were allegedly destroyed, however, 10 of these are rumored to have been distributed among employees of Wizards of the Coast. The actual existence of the card was denied by Wizards of the Coast all the way until 2006, when a staff member released an image of the card claiming that it was a genuine copy. In the following years, other collectors had tried to claim that they had the card while getting branded as fake by the community. No certification body such as PSA, CGC, or Beckett has ever received one of these cards. Many cards within Pokemon are the holy grail for different collectors, but everyone agrees that this card could well turn up and become the most expensive Pokemon card in history. Until then, we're gonna have to wait.